Hey I actually have one to tell that I just remembered. One day when I'm 12 years old, also my mom sits me down to talk with me after work. Really strange, she never does this and it was out of the blue. Tells me she has a story about when she was a kid and it's going to sound a bit weird, but she has to tell someone. She told her dad but he's since passed away and someone else has to know. Anyway, story goes my mom was about my age when she moved into a house with her dad. They were always moving every few years, never staying in one place for too long. This house is older, in an old part of town, but is pretty nice. Mom gets the feeling she's being watched but doesn't tell her dad about it. Has many nightmares and has to sleep in bed with her dad a lot but tries to be brave. Dad doesn't get a lot of sleep either. Mom spends a lot of time home alone because her dad was always busy at work so she would take the day to explore the house and neighborhood and then barricade herself in her father's room at night, waiting for him to come home at midnight or later. During her daytime exploration she becomes obsessed with finding secret passageways as she'd read about them in books and had a dream about one. Behind the fireplace in the living room she finds a panel that's loose and she pulls it off revealing a door. She opens it and it opens outward. She steps in. Now this is a part that really hurt her to tell me about. Behind the fireplace it was warm and kind of dark, and there were a few dark alcoves. She's on her hands and knees and looks into one of them and leaned up against the side is a corpse with blood on it. She screams and hits her head on the low ceiling and frantically tries to escape but the door she came in is blocked by something on the outside. She bangs against the door but it hardly budges. She's screaming, crying, hyperventilating, my mom is in tears telling this story and she never cries, I'm shaken up. She turns around and she sees the outline of the corpse in the dark, still sitting there propped up against the wall. Mom can't escape and is certain she's going to die, starts hitting her elbows against the wall and even smashes her head against the door, she's absolutely losing it. She is trapped here for hours as the sun goes down and all remaining light disappears. Somewhere in there is the corpse. Outside she hears the back door unlock and her dad walk inside. She starts screaming and pounding on the door and her dad rushes over to the fireplace. A heavy scraping sound and she shoves the door open and he pulls her out. He's absolutely stunned. Mom crying as she points into the hidden room and describes the body to her dad and how she was trapped there. She looks over and sees that somehow someone had dragged the safe her dad had in front of the door while she was in without her hearing. Her dad hugs her tight and grabs a flashlight and crawls into the opening. He shines it around and explores the whole thing. There's nobody and he explains that to my mom. She tells him that it was there and he believes her, he tells her he saw something strange once. Somehow the corpse had disappeared. He assures her that he will sell the house soon and they will move out in a week. He closes the door and puts the panel back on, nails the door shut, and moves the safe in front of it. That night the two of them don't sleep. Grandpa arranges to pick up my mom and bring him to work but one of his asshole managers won't let him bring her on the days he's supervising which is three a week. After school one day my mom spends the entire time locked in her dad's room doing homework. She hears a sound of a pop and something unlatches behind her. A panel on the wall next to her father's bed had swung open like a door and creaked before it hit the wall. Mom is scared but curious. Grabs flashlight and leans over the bed to peer into the space. This doorway is almost as tall and wide as her dad but leads into a short, narrow hallway with some steep stairs at the end. She is too scared to explore so she is about to reach for the panel and close it when a pounding on her father's door starts. The door starts shaking as if it's about to give way. She runs into the opening and slams the hidden door shut behind her. Trapped in darkness save for her flashlight beam. Here's a crack and the bedroom door breaks open. Heavy, slow footsteps in the room that pace around the bed and back again before settling next to the hidden door. Mom retreats slowly back up the stairs at the end of the passage. This leads her to a crawl space area above the second floor and she follows one of the paths leading towards her room. As she goes along she notices little vents and openings that one could peer out of. 
Finally, she reaches the area above her room and sees her bed in plain view. If someone was up here, they could have easily watched her without her seeing them. The house had ornate woodwork and this peephole was hidden up there somewhere on the molding. She's paralyzed by the fear of it and whatever is in her father's bedroom. She stays up there for some time, she said about an hour. Back door unlocks and her father walks up the stairs to find his bedroom door broken. He panics and shouts for my mom. She answers him but it's muffled and she crawls back the way she came. Opens hidden door and steps out to her shocked father. Explains what happened to him. He examines the passages and is deeply disturbed. That night he quits his job as they won't let him take the night off. Nowhere for them to stay until the house is sold and that it is freezing cold and snowing out. They call the police to report the intrusion, but the police are busy with other things at the moment and promise to send an officer as soon as possible. Grandpa decides out of desperation to try spending the night at the neighbors. The two of them dress up in warm clothes and gather bags to spend the night. By now there's a foot or two of snow out and they walk to the neighbor's house. Grandpa knocks on the door but nobody answers, rings the doorbell and no response. Heads to the next house, nobody answers, then the next. Crosses the street to try again and tries five different houses. Both are panicking and starting to freeze. They head back to spend the night in his car but when they approach it, all the windows have been smashed. Terrified and nearly freezing, they head back inside. Grandpa's door is busted so they spend the night in mom's room. Moves her dresser in front of the door and he locates the peephole and stuffs it full of some cotton. The two, of course, never sleep. They take turns reading a book waiting for the sun to rise, until late in the night they hear something scraping against the floor downstairs. It's the safe, being pushed along the floor. The two look at each other and Grandpa hugs her tightly. They both have tears in their eyes and Grandpa runs over to grab a knife he had by the table. Then they hear the creaking as the thing walks up the stairs and slowly towards Mom's room. Mom is shaking and silently sobbing while her dad holds her tight. The thing starts slamming on the door, absolutely wailing on it. Grabs Mom and runs over to the window and pulls it open and looks below. It's not too big of a fall and there's two or three feet of snow built up there. Grabs my mom and the two of them look at the door as it shakes with each hit. Holds her tight and jumps into a snow pile, landing on his feet very hard. Curses in pain and looks up as a final crash is heard. A figure moves into view and stands by the window. It's the corpse my mother had seen but with new life in it. Blood dripping down it, eyes appear to be missing, just dark sockets. Tilts its head to one side and looks down at them. Grandpa runs as fast as he can through the snow while carrying my mom. Keeps going for blocks and blocks through the shallower snow in the road. Eventually he reaches downtown and runs into a 7-11. Begs the manager and he agrees to let them spend the night in the store, the two fall asleep on the floor in the back office. In the morning, Grandpa decides nobody can live in that evil house. Returns to his home and torches it burns down entirely safe for the foundation, the fireplace, and the secret room behind the fireplace, all brick. He made it look like an accident and the inspectors buy it. Police are a bit suspicious because of the call to the police the night before and the broken glass on his car but decide it's not worth their time. Not like he's trying insurance fraud or anything and he's an outstanding citizen. The two move away to live with family after that. Grandpa passed away not too long ago. Mom takes me to see the site of the house a week later. Somebody had rebuilt it around the brick foundation. She bursts into tears and we drive away. Never talks about it again. Now after writing all of this, I have to add that little 12 year old me was very skeptical of the paranormal and even of this. She told the story so well but I had to wonder if she was somehow pulling my leg. She's never done anything like that to me, though. To this day it sounds too much like a movie. Yet she swore to me that it happened and she was so disturbed by it.